AFLW, who watches it? Me. The more they play, the better it gets. The AFLW show. This AFLW show will be better than any other AFLW show there is. We will talk the truth. We will give all the reviews and previews of the rounds just gone and upcoming. We will talk about any topical conversations on this show. The show for the people. This is the AFLW show and it starts right now. Yes, no. See? Deliberate! Deliberate! That is deliberate as you can get. That's deliberate! Review! There we go! I already had it on, I already knew. Xenos. Good player. Very good player, Xenos. On the boundary. Yes, got well under Zenos. Very good player. Got well under Saints in front of six, three goals to two. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the AFLW Show, episode four. Episode four. I'm your host, Cooper Gretsch, the sole admin of AFL Information, Trade Rumors and Results, and uh, very, very. Interesting round of AFLW. We had some close games. We had some blowouts again. Um, some individual performances, which were very, very good. Um, one of the best individual performances of any AFLW play in the history. Laura Gardner, 41 disposals. She was absolutely awesome. And we'll get to that throughout the, in the Sydney game. Um, we're going to go through... The review of the rounds has gone up coming. My team of the week, my Scoop Save for W medal for round three, uh, Scoop Shows Bang, which will be on the standard of umpiring and any other goss around it. Now, if you didn't check out yesterday, I had an interview with GWS young star from the Giants who made her debut a couple of rounds ago. Pick eight from the Giants, Caitlin Miller. Go check that out if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate it. It's on the YouTube channel right now. So go smash a like on that video, this video, and that video. I want to greatly appreciate it if you could go check it out there. As you can see there, there's a graphic there. Um, the uh, um, interview, exclusive interview with GWS AFLW young star, Caitlin Miller. So please go check that out. The link should be in the description of this video or go check out previous videos. Um, and as of this recording, I may or may not at least upload it or announced the next big guest or guests on the show <laughs> i'm recording this before it's happened so i do not want to say it's happened if it hasn't happened but trust me you'll know if it's happened i would have said it already or announced it tonight so keep an eye out for that and i was really happy to meet some of my favorite saints or my two favorite saints players georgia patrikios and nicola zenos you can see at the top of the screen and obviously it's nice also meeting Renee Saltis from the Saints, who just came back from an ACL injury this round. So great to see you back on the field. I got to meet a few of the Suns players and Tani Brown from the Pies as well. So we really appreciate to each and every single one of those girls for a photo and having a good chat as well. All five, no, six of them, six of them. So greatly appreciate to all of them. And go check out that vlog as well. Saints v Power AFRW vlog. And then I attended the Collingwood Victoria, uh, Collingwood Suns game at Victoria Park in the last quarter. Just caught the last quarter of that game. 12 point win at the Suns. We'll get to that shortly. Jamie Stanton kicking three was awesome. And, and uh, she, down in defense, Jacqueline Dupe was terrific. Number 27 for the Suns in defense. Three or four great marks in defense. A couple of contested marks in that in the last quarter to every time the Pies kept trying. Jacqueline Dupe got in their way. All right. First, I want to start with this. You want me on Cameo? Head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Want me to roast a friend, wish someone happy birthday, anything at all, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. 
Subscribe if you haven't already. Want to aim for 20 likes for this video. So please smash the like button on this video. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, and once we hit 3K subscribers, there will be some prize giveaways. And I mean it. I'm a man of my word. Um, and get this episode. You love AFLW. You're watching this. There's over hundreds of views on this video or episode podcast every week in this particular podcast. So obviously there's people that care about it. So please, if you're watching this, please like, share the video around, and subscribe if you haven't already if you're watching. I really want to get more AFLW people on this show. And more people that like watching FOW to watch it. So I greatly appreciate every single one of you who keeps watching and smashing the like button. Would I would appreciate it even more. And it's absolutely free. And same as subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. All right. There should be some more guests in the future of AFW. So keep an eye out for that. In some talks at the moment. Um, so you'll be the first to know. All right. It's time for that world famous segment. Scoops goes bang. Boom. Oh, <laughs> The standard of umpiring is just all round in the AFL as well and in the AFLW is just frustrating. You've seen the clip there at the start where the Port Adelaide player knocked the ball out of bounds. Blatant and deliberate, right? They went for the points. They missed, hit the point post, or went through the out of bounds, and they paid it out in the full. Number one, that's wrong. It was a, didn't hit anyone. It hit the point post. So that's one that's a wrong call. Then they argue for a little bit. Xenos, as you saw there, clearly was annoyed and said, that's deliberate. I, Sarah, you heard me say it. You heard a few people around me say it. It was deliberate. Straight away, you don't need to have a meeting about it. I could see it. So how could they not see it? Xenos saw it. It was further away than them. Like, how could they miss that? And luckily, they finally made the right call, and she got the... Shot a goal, and Zenos gets a great goal from the boundary line. Great player too, Nicholas Zenos, as you heard in the clip. Um, but, yeah, it's, that's just one of many examples. There was one where I have footage job, so go check out the vlog. I have it down pinned in the comment section below. If not, go check the most recent videos. And you see, I think it was in the last quarter, I think it was, first, the last quarter or the uh, – yeah, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. It was near the boundary line on that same side of that last quarter where I was on, and Port Adelaide played, dropped the ball. Nothing happened from it, and I'm pretty sure Port scored from it. So it's just like the inconsistency of arm is so frustrating. Um, They need to get better and learn their rules properly because it's really frustrating when they keep butchering decisions that are so basic, and I can see from Grand Sense, just like the one last week with Pasparkas. Oh, sorry, Bonnie too good. Marked it over the line, clear cut. Paid a mark. We lost by two goals. It's just like, come on, be better than that. And this should be score review in the women's games too, by the way. A lot of those venues can have that technology and it should be used and used well because the AFL don't know how to use it well either. So lift your game. Pathetic. All right. Hope you guys and girls enjoy that edition of the world famous segment. Scoops goes bang. Right. Now it's time to go through my AFL team of the week. All righty. From the back line, the pockets, Mia Bush and Hannah Priest. Full back, Mackenzie Erdley. Half back line, the flank is Emma Kearney and Gab Pound. Center half back, Jacqueline Dupay. Wingman, Claudia Whitford and Sophie Conway. Centerman, Ali Anderson. Half full line. The flank is Danielle Ponta and Laura Gardner. Center half forward and Tyge. Forward pockets, Kate Hoare and Keeley Skeeper. Full forward, Jamie Stanton. Ruckman, Ali Morford. Rovers, Jasmine Garner and Anne Hatchard. Interchange, Mia King, Ali Blackburn, Ebony Marinoff and Anne Dorick. And the sub, Kira Bowers from the Dockers. Emergencies. Georgia Prasparkas, Elise Parker, Manique Conti, Maddie Prasparkas, and Matilda Schultz. Um, some of the key inclusions there um, to go through here. Um, let's get the graphic up for you all so you can see it now. I'm going to make sure I get the right one up and not the vote one. <laughs> so there, as you can see there, let me get that other banner off. Uh, Mia Bush was terrific. Lockdown defender, had eight tackles, five one percenters. Maybe only had eight disposals, but she was terrific, eight, one, eight tackles, five one percenters, did a really good job pressuring, and there were some tackles, I'm sure, 
that she had that wasn't given as tackles as other teammates tackled them as well. She was really good. Um, yeah, it was good to see for her, for a side that didn't do too well. In only her fifth game in her second season, Mackenzie Early for the Hawks, close loss as a key defender, 15 disposals, like 11 in one percenters, intercept possessions. She was terrific and deserved a spot on the team. Had a priest, for the Saints, 22 disposals as a key position defender, or oh, medium sized defender as well. She did really well. And McCurney, 12 one percenters, eight intercept possessions, like 22 disposals. It was really good for the Roos in there. Comeback win over the Geelong Footy Club. Uh, Gap Pound was good for Carlton, around 20 disposals off half back. Jacqueline Dupay kicked a goal, but also played well on defence and deserved a spot in the team after her terrific marking in the last quarter, which I said earlier, like three or four great marks, pack marks as well, contested marks. Wingman and Claudia Witt for the Suns was really good, 24 disposals. Sophie Conway for the Lions kicked three and about 20 disposals was good. Ali Anderson was terrific for the Brisbane Lions. Uh, Danielle Ponta for the Crows kicking three and about 18 disposals. And Tigey. 12 marks, three goals, around 20 disposals for her, for the Dockers. She was terrific, and she's why they won, really. Laura Gardner for the, for the Swans. Wow, wow. 41 disposals, like 15 marks. It, it, I'm going to get the banner off because I'm sure someone will clip this for me. That performance from Laura Gardner was one shy of the record of disposals. The record was 42 disposals. She got 41. I'm going to go as far as to say that Laura Gardner from the Swans, the 41 disposals, 15 on marks, a lot of tackles as well, and everything else in between. Laura Gardner's performance on the weekend with 41 disposals was the single best performance of an AFLW player ever. Ever. That was the single most perfect performance of any AFLW player of all time, and they lost. Laura Garner was terrific. Now, let me go continue to go through that team of the week. Let me get it back up. Uh, yeah, Kate Hall kicked three, 22 odd disposals. She was terrific. Jamie Stan kicked three in seven disposals, but Suns only kicked four goals, and she kicked three of them, so she deserved a spot on the team. Keely Skipper, three or four goals with 22 disposals. Uh, was terrific for Carlton in their big win over the Eagles. Ali Morfitt was dominant in the ruck for the Swans. Like 15 disposals, like 34 hitters. She was terrific in her first season as well. Just dominating. Rising star contender for sure. She'd be, have to be one of the odds-on favourites to win it. Jasmine Garner for the Ruse was terrific. 32 disposals again. Just racks it up every single week and dominates. And Hatchard the same. Two goals, 28 disposals for the Crows. She was terrific. Mia King for the Ruse. She was really good. About 25 what disposals through the midfield. A lot of goal assists as well. I think three. Ali Blackburn, two goals, 28 disposals or so. Deserves a spot on the team. Ebony Marinoff had about 22 disposals with like 13 to 15 tackles for the Crows. She was good. And Darek was the port best player on the ground. She had about 25 disposals, a lot of contested possessions and decent efficiency in the se- late 70s, 76, I think, 77. She was good. Kira Bowers is a sub. She was pretty decent for the Dockers as well, about 23 disposals and about 11 tackles. So that left Georgia Pasparkas from Geelong, Elise Parker from the Giants, Manny Conti from the Tigers, Manny Pasparkas from the Bombers, and Matilda Schultz from the Power. Um, they were all the next options. Elise Parker kicked 2 and 21, could have been in the team. Manny Conti at 28, Pasparkas kicked 2 and 21. Georgia Pasparkas kicked a goal in 26, and Matilda Schultz had like 15 disposals, for about 26 hit outs, and she was the best ruckman on the field against the Saints yesterday. So comment down below your thoughts on my team of the week. Love to hear your thoughts on that. All right, let's go now. Review round three. It was really an interesting round. Um, started on Friday night at GMHBA. It was Geelong 22, defeated by North Melbourne 31. If I was a Geelong fan, I'd be really pissed off of how they played out the game. They were about 20 points up most of this game and then they just just went and North Melbourne pressed and pressed and well Geelong were just terrible after that it's disappointing for them because they look like they were going to do really well and then they just just they just dropped completely they just like it's like they 
just caved in and said, nah, it's enough. We've done enough. You know, we did it. We did a good enough job. And well, they didn't. And that was really disappointing for them. And they should be really disappointed of how they performed there in the end. Kearney was great for North along with me, King. Um, but, and obviously Emma Kearney and Garner. So, yeah, great win for Geelong, uh, for North Melbourne. And Matty Pasparkas was Geelong's best play by a fair bit. Next game we go through was on Saturday. It was GWS 34 to Richmond 53. Richmond started very well. GWS, to their credit, came back. There was a snake on the field pre-game. was delayed by like 10 to 15 minutes. Unbelievable. Um, and then the guy, the snake catcher guy they talked about, picking up with his bare hands. Jeez. Not, ever heard of gloves, mate? Oh, yeah, boy. And they say they're poisonous, and yet he's wearing, not wearing gloves. Unbelievable. Um, anyway, that's another story. Um, but yeah, the Giants, they came back after big trailing, and then they hit the front, and then Richmond went bang, 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 and it was disappointing how they rolled over in the end, Giants. It was great credit to them for coming back from about three goals down. Then hit the front by about a goal, and then be losing by 19 points in the end. <sighs> Pretty disappointing, though, in the end. I mean, Conti was Richmond's best player, and Zali Goldsworthy was one of the Giants' best players, along with Elise Parker and Tani Evans. For Melbourne and Bulldogs, Melbourne 83 smashed the Dogs 41, 42 points. Melbourne in the clear-cut option for the favourite for the flag this year, along with Adelaide and Brisbane and North Melbourne. Been saying it all year. That's going to be a clear-cut top four. Uh, Katie Hoare, three goals, 22 disposals. Terrific. Lauren Pierce in the ruck was really good. Um, Tyler Hanks was great. Um, you can go through their whole list. Alyssa Bannon got injured. Hopefully she's all good. She's obviously a key part in their forward line. Loves to kick a few goals every week. Um, and Lily Mithen was also good for the Demons. For the Bulldogs, Ali Blackburn was good. Um, Wilcox was good for the Bulldogs as well. They actually were close, the Bulldogs. It was about 10 points late in the third, and then they they just, I don't know what the hell they did, but they got absolutely destroyed. Surprised it didn't happen earlier, but credit to them for sticking it out. I expected Melbourne to win by the margin they won by, but from an earlier period of the game, but they got the win to that margin by 42 points nonetheless. Adelaide 81 defeated the Bombers 34, 47 point victory to the Crows, as expected. But the Bombers are up at quarter time by four points. Just Jessica Wooshner, who I interviewed earlier in the season, before the season, crouched to her on her game 50th, and along with Bonnie Too Good, her teammate. The Bombers, though, they weren't too good on this game, in this game. Um, Mia Bush was too, as I said earlier. Might have had only nine disposals, but like five intercept, uh, one percenters, eight tackles, kept her forward to minimal impact and I thought she was terrific in the side and defense that leaked a lot of goals and scores she was really good because you know they had Hatchard and Pontar and Caitlin Gould and girls like that to counter I thought they did pretty well in oh she, Mia Bush did pretty well in those circumstances but her fellow defenders didn't have a great day at the office and as I said for the Crows Hatchard, Marinoff, um, Ponta, Really good. Neve Kelly, who I interviewed, had a solid game as well last from last week. Uh, but, yeah, the Crows were too good in the end. Frio and Hawthorne. Frio 35, defeated the Hawks 22 by 13 points. Frio were good. Bowers and Teague up forward. Three goals, 22 disposals, like 12 marks. It was absolutely awesome. Um, Bowers is solid as well. But Mackenzie Early was terrific for the Hawks, as I said, as early as a key defender, like 13, 13 15 disposals, 10 marks, one percenters. It was really good in the Hawks' defence. That wasn't going that great. Tilly Lucas Rod was also solid for the Hawks. Next game to go through is the Saints. 48 defeated by the Power 56. Unacceptable. Up by 20 late in the third and then lose by eight points. They had against the Breeze in the third quarter. And the last 10 minutes, the ball was essentially 95% of the time of the play down there. Unacceptable. Um, I don't care who, how inexperienced you are, so are they. The fun fact, too, apparently I was told that the Power have not won a game outside of Adelaide Oval or outside of Adelaide. Um, unacceptable. I knew going in that Port weren't a great side. Saints at home, a bit more experience in the team. I would have thought they would have done well. Aaron Phillips hit their first goal for the Power, and it was the Sealer, which I also got on the film, which check the vlog if you haven't already. 
should be down below or check the most recent videos. It was just unacceptable. To have that lead, you know, was just pathetic. That's plain and simple. Xenos was terrific in the first quarter. He's seen that goal. She got really good, strong, pressured player. Um, Jamie Lampert was good as well. Um, it was good for the Saints coming over from the Pies. The other recruits need to step it up, including Steph Chiocci. I feel like she's a good player, but she hasn't really been playing well since joining the Saints. Lambert's been consistent since she's joined. Serene Watson was a ride last week against the Bombers. But the recruits need to stand up. Warlaw was disappointing in the first two games. was better yesterday. So they, they need to, to collectively step it up because that's where the wins and the goals and that are going to come from those type of names and the experience and the good performances are going to come from those type of girls along with Stanos and Patrikios and the captain, Hannah Priest. Um, yeah, disappointing, though, how that ended. Power of Matilda Schultz was good in the ruck against Simone Nelda. Um, she was clearly the best ruckman on the ground. And Gemma Houghton had some chances in the second half, did all right. Um, Dan Dowry, because I said, was their best player. Um, it was just disappointing how the game transpired in the end. Very disappointed. Uh, next game, Colin, Collingwood and Carlton, even at three good a time, 21-33. to 33. Great win for the Suns in the end. Um, Jamie Stan kicked three of their four goals. Um, she was really good. And they were really good and deserved the win, the Suns. Um, Jez- Atani Brown was okay for the Pies. Britt Benici played the 50th game. Um, as I said earlier, Jacqueline Dupe was terrific in the last quarter down in defence with about three or four good contests. And Marcus Claudia Whitfield was the Suns' other best player, along with Stanton. Uh, Brianna Davey and Charlie Rowbottom played on each other. Both had 18 odd disposals. Both were kept relatively quiet for their high standards. The next game, we're going to go through the Eagles and Carlton. Two sides down the bottom of the ladder, and, well, the Blues showed they're far better than the Eagles. At In Perth, Eagles 24, Blues 77. Zoe Wackfer played her first game right under her, um, the twin sister of Lauren. Um, but, yeah. It was just, they were very bad. Emma Swanson was their only good player. Uh, for Carl and Keeley, Skip Carr kicked three and 22. She was terrific. Brianna Moody was good in the ruck. A lot of hit outs and possessions and goals. Um, Darcy Vessio was solid as well for Carlton. Uh, Mimi Hill was also good as well. The final game to go through, Brisbane and Sydney. Brisbane 87, defeated the Swans 32, 55-point victory. Ali Anderson was good. Sophie Conway was good. Jade Allinger was good. Um, some nice goals for some Brisbane players, but Laura Gardner for the Swans and Ali Morford, phenomenal. Rising star prediction for me now is going to be Ali Morford. Um, and as for Laura Gardner's best performance, the single most, the best individual performance of an AFLW player of all time, Laura Gardner, 41 disposals. She was one off, one shy for the record of 42. She was good. Very good. Her team were not, and she would be highly disappointed in how the team played. You're seeing her individual performance was phenomenal, along with Ali Morford, hence why both were in my team of the week. Uh, it's individual performances that get yourself in the team. We know how your team goes. Now, right, the next thing to go through is, oh, here we go. It's time for the scoops. AFLW medal. Going to reenact the votes like the great Dylan McLaughlin. <clears throat> Round three. Geelong v North Melbourne. Geelong, Georgia Prasparkas, one vote. North Melbourne, Mia King, two votes. North Melbourne, Jasmine Garner, three votes. GWS v Richmond. GWS, Zala, Zali Goldsworthy, one vote. Richmond, Manique Conti, two votes. GWS, Elise Parker, three votes. Melbourne v Western Bulldogs. Melbourne, Tyler Hanks, one vote. Western Bulldogs, Ali Blackburn, two votes. Melbourne, Kate Hall, three votes. Adelaide v Essendon. Essendon, Mia Bush, one vote. Adelaide, Ebony Marinoff, two votes. Adelaide, Anne Hatchard, three votes. Fremantle v Hawthorne. Fremantle, Kira Bowers, one vote. Hawthorne, Mackenzie Early, two votes. Fremantle, Anne Teague, 
three votes. St Kilda v Port Adelaide. St Kilda, Nicholas Zenos, one vote. St Kilda, Jesse Wardlaw, two votes. Port Adelaide, Abby Doric, three votes. Collingwood v Cold Coast. Gold Coast, Jacqueline Dupay, one vote. Gold Coast, Jamie Stanton, two votes. Gold Coast, Claudia Whitford, three votes. West Coast v Carlton. Carlton, Mimi Hill, one vote. Carlton, Breen Moody, two votes. Carlton, Keely Skipka, Skipper, three votes. Brisbane v Sydney. Brisbane, Ali Anderson, one vote. Sydney, Ali Morfitt, two votes. Sydney, Laura Gardner, three votes. That is my votes for round three. Again, you will not see a leaderboard there on the screen. I'm keeping it low-key. I've decided for still a right now. I think since I've done three rounds now of no leaderboards, I think we're going to keep it at that. And I'll probably stop the votes at round five or six. And then, yeah, then it'll be hidden till the end of the season. Then I'll do a Scoops AFLW medal show. I think it'll be a really, really cool idea. So send off down below in the comment section what your th votes would be, uh, what you think of them. Yeah, comment down below what you think and what you would have done and what you would have changed. Or if you like it, just say it. Comment down below. I would greatly appreciate it. Now, it's time to go through my AFW fantasy team. Uh, yeah, I scored 1,277, not the greatest score. And I dropped in the ranking by about 600. I'm now 8,341. Um, I ended up changing my trades to when we last spoke. Um, I didn't bring in Georgia G in the end. I ended up changing it. And I had Laura Garner in too and undone it. And she just scored 151. How's she only got 151 with 41 disposing like 12 people's and marks? It's just unbelievable. Um, ended up bringing in Charlie Rowbottom, who's had her worst score of the year, scoring semi eight or something. I had, uh, having a complete blank who else I brought in, but um, yeah, I took out. Mariana Anthony in the midfield, and that was Charlie Rowbottom. Um, yeah, um, my back line was the same. Mia Bush just came on the field for Abby McDonald, who was dropped for Geelong. The Ruckman, ah, it wasn't Elise Edmonds. It is now Matilda Schultz from Port Adelaide. And in the four lines, it said Gene Gardner went in. I put uh, Huntington came in on the bench. I had a blank card put on the field. I, I left um, – Warlaw was the only four that went out in the end. So, but, yeah, that's my team. Comment down below your score, how you went, how would you go in the rankings. Comment down below. I'd love to hear how you guys and girls went. I haven't done my three trades yet. I'm still thinking about who the trades will be. So, for now. And, plus, generally, even if I've done it now, I will very likely change it yet again. All right, let's go preview round four. Now, also, before I continue in this, please subscribe if you haven't already. Smash the like button. I would greatly appreciate it. And get your friends on board. Share them the link. Get them to subscribe. Like the video. And join in the conversation in the chat. And like the video. would greatly appreciate it. All right. Let's go preview round four. Starts on uh, Friday night at Frankston. It's 5.05 p.m. Victorian time on Friday night. It's Hawthorne hosting Melbourne at Franks and I'll be going for Melbourne in this one by 40 points. And they'll be too good. On Saturday, 11.05 a.m. at Marnica over in Canberra. It is the Giants hosting the Crows. The Giants will be, I mean, the Crows will be far too good. They're by 30-odd points. On Saturday, 1.05 p.m. at Icon Park, it's Carlton hosting Richmond. Ooh, I'll be tipping Richmond in this one to win by 10 points. Saturday, 1.05 p.m. at Alberton Oval in Adelaide. It's Port Adelaide hosting Geelong. I'll put him in Geelong. Let's spot Port just being the Saints. And on Sunday, we've got a game in Utah Stadium in Longceston. It's North Melbourne hosting Brisbane at 1.05 p.m. Victorian time. I'll be tipping the – ooh. I'm going to tip the ruse there. Saturday, Sunday at 3.05 p.m. at RCA Park Moorabbin. It's the Saints hosting the Pies 3.05 Victorian time. Uh – I'm going to be tipping oh, 
I'm going to tip my Saints in this one just. Sunday, 3 or 5 p.m. at Windy Hill. It's the Bombers hosting the Dockers. Ooh, this is an interesting one as well. Hmm. <sighs> hmm. Gonna go, gee. I'm going to go the Bombers in this one. And to wrap up the round, Sunday, 5.05 p.m. at Heritage Bank Center up on the Gold Coast. It's Gold Coast hosting the Western Bulldogs. I'll be tipping the Gold Coast Suns, who are currently fourth on the ladder, which is very, very impressive. Now, my final, th my final thoughts are simply this. You want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Want me to roast a friend, wish someone a happy birthday, anything at all, cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. If you're watching this and you know any AFLW players that you would love to get on the show, meet at the interview or do a Gold King Challenge with, please comment down below. Message me on Instagram, AFL Info Live. If you know any AFLW players and you would like to see them on the show, just message me and we'll try and get things organized. Great appreciation. More guests coming up. Um, and if you would like to be a co-host on this show in some degree or behind the scenes work, please feel free to message me on Instagram, AFL Info Live, or my Facebook page, AFL Information, Trade Rumors and Results, which has over 54,000 likes. That's the right one to click on. Thank you all to the next video. Go Saints. And, of course, acknowledge me the one. Thank you. Go Saints.